Right, so thank you all so, so much for coming. Um, I'm, I'm super grateful um, to share this. This online business, as you know, can be a little bit lonely sometimes. And so this is really special um, to be together with you guys. Um, a lot of the uh, practical things that I do as an online language teacher has to do with digital technologies and social media and marketing and strategy and design and that kind of stuff. And, and there's a lot of tips for that in, in this book. Um, so what kind of services and products you might want to create as a language teacher, how to market yourself online, um, how to create assets and content for your business and what type of content you should create and and a little bit about the tools and platforms and programs that I recommend using and some that I don't recommend using uh, and so on. Um, and there's also a lot of tools in, in my toolkit as well, which is um, this is a large uh, collection of all my business templates. This hasn't quite been published yet, uh, but it will be published very soon. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure when, but I think it's coming out next week. Um, and then also um, I have, I'm starting to build up what I call a language teacher rebel hub, where I also focus a lot on the IT and the tech and marketing. And, and I'm hoping to launch this hub next year. It's cur currently going through beta testing. Um, but if you wanna read more about that, just go to my website, annaleeharker.com. But yeah, so all of these things are kind of, a lot of focus on on the tools and techniques uh, for us language teachers that um, and things that I've learned throughout the years of how we can market ourselves better and grow our businesses online. Um, but that's just the what um, side of things. And as as some of you may know, um, I always recommend starting with why. Um, so I was going to um, share with you a little bit about why I started doing this. So, and when I say this, I mean the language teacher rebel thing. So, so this is actually how it started. So I think it was back in 2014, I was invited to a language school in London to do a workshop for the teachers on how to teach on Skype and I said yes sure I can come up and do that prepared stuff um, kind of had my slides and thought that we were going to sort of role play you know how to share documents and that kind of thing it was a few years ago so a lot of people didn't know um, and in the beginning of this workshop I can't remember if it was two or three hours long um, I just said briefly, like, so I'm Annalie and Swedish Media EC, blah, blah, blah. I've done this for X number of years. Um, and I teach online. And yeah, I just gave a very brief kind of summary of what I do. And what happened during that workshop, and I don't know if actually there is somebody in here who was at that workshop. Mm. Um, <laughs> But what happened was that a lot of the teachers just went, stop, hang on, what do you mean you teach online? Is that the only thing you do? And I was like, yes. And they said, but, yeah, but how do you take payments? Like, how do you, do you have a website? Like, how have you set that up? How do you, how, how do you find lessons? How do you market yourself? And I was completely unprepared for this. So I was like, oh, OK. But that was the first time when I thought, oh, gosh, actually, um, I have learned a few things throughout the years. And uh, I realized that there were other people who were kind of in the same thought process of maybe doing something of their own. So that's how I started. That was back in 2014. And I wasn't able to do anything about it because I'd just been commissioned to write um, the new version of Teach Yourself Complete Swedish. So I was busy with that. So I just 
put it aside and was like, yeah, that's a nice idea, but I can't do it now. And then I published the other book and I was done and I thought about this again. And this was now we're up to 2018 or 17, maybe. And Brexit happened, which upset me so much. <laughs> I was so angry and so frustrated. And there was just a lot of things going on in the world where I just felt like this, I'm, I'm not happy. This is, re it feels like we're becoming really insular as a society, or at least in the Western world. And I just felt like I want to do something, but I don't know what. And, and then this idea came back up again. And I thought, well, I am doing something in one way. Um, it's on a very small grassroots level, but I think that's what, where the sort of seed to language teacher rebel actually started really taking shape. Um, so, so yeah, so I was inspired by some pretty, in my opinion, awful events. Um, and I wrote um, the very first piece of this book. Um, and it was actually the thing that I started with. And this is what I'd like to read to you today. Of course, I should have put a bookmark in it so I know where it is. Here we go. Um, and I called this section the language teacher rebel mission. Even though our world is becoming more connected and increasingly globalized, there's at least one area that is going in the opposite direction, the media. As a result of our personalized news feeds, cookies, and other digital aids, a phenomenon called a filter bubble has appeared. Eli Pariser coined this phrase in his 2011 TED talk, where he describes his concern with web personalization. A filter bubble means that you can get different search results when Googling something compared to someone else based on your previous search history. A classic example is that people with a liberal political orientation who Google BP might get results about oil spills, but a person with a conservative leaning might get results that include investment information about the company. It's very easy these days to get a distorted view of our world through the internet and social media. In a globalized world, many problems have become international and politicized, the environment, economics, social issues, etc. These global problems require global solutions, and for that, we need global conversations. Teaching a language can support the development of global conversations. With the help of language, people can express themselves, share their thoughts with the world, especially with the aid of digital technologies. Although not everyone wants to become a politician or an activist, I do feel that we as language teachers have a really important role to play in the future. As a language teacher, you can make a positive impact on the world. You can become a bridge builder and make a difference. You can expand people's bubbles by teaching them a new language so they can read and understand media and literature from a different country. You can also widen people's webs and networks by publishing, sharing and telling stories about the country and its culture. The internet and the digital era in which we now live give you amazing opportunities to reach people on an unprecedented global scale. But you'll also widen your own web and network and burst your own filter bubble through interacting with students from all over the world. It's a win-win. Globalization today means that it's easier to get a job and move to a different country. It's easier to meet someone from a different country. But more dra dramatic events like climate change and conflicts will also force people to uproot 
and migrate to a different place. People will continue to move to other countries for many reasons and will need to absorb and integrate into a new culture. And those who are already in a country may wish to integrate further. You can become a bridge between cultures and through your teaching, you will pass this on to your students and make them bridges too. You will enable them to see different perspectives and enhance their cultural understanding. Culturalism is an important component to help people to connect both regionally and globally. Familiarity overcomes and destroys fear. And in order to understand culture, language is a key component. Language skills are a ticket to participate in culture. With digital tools, this journey can now start much earlier than before, and people can start to prepare before they even settle in a new country. Since the 2020 outbreak of COVID-19, many traditional language schools have had to close or try to move online. Many people are finding themselves at home for longer periods, perhaps with more time and sometimes more money on their hands, and they want to develop their skills further. Many students in Sweden have reached out to us to improve their Swedish in case they need to look for a new job in the future. The digital age has arrived, whether you like it or not, it's happening. And it has created a perfect environment for you as a language teacher to reach a much wider student base than has been remotely possible before. You must develop your entrepreneurial mindset and embrace change. You must become more curious, daring, and be ready to take on new challenges. By breaking free from the traditional classroom way of thinking, you can make a living from home or from anywhere else, teaching people from all over the world. From a global perspective, you have an even bigger and more important opportunity as a language teacher rebel. You can encourage integration on a worldwide scale. With your skills, together with technology, you can extend cultural values and understanding way beyond the classroom. You can build bridges, spread knowledge and increase empathy. And today, more than ever, that's badly needed. Let's look into the future for a moment. What kind of lifestyle would you have as a language teacher rebel? Would you set up a base at home, but work with compressed hours, which would allow you more free time? Would you travel and teach at the same time? Would you have more time to spend with your family? What are the things that mean a lot to you that you would be able to achieve if you were a language teacher rebel with flexible work hours and work locations? This is your rallying call. Are you ready to become a language teacher rebel? If you are, let's go.